what's up guys welcome back to case daily programming this is part four of our sql fundamentals and in today's videos we'll be talking about data types and if you guys haven't watched the first three videos i suggest you go through those videos i'll put the link to those videos in the description box below and like i always say i'll try my best to keep these videos as short as possible so without wasting any of your time let's get straight into this In our previous video, we created our table modules and we inserted this data. And I said in this video that I'll be explaining to you guys what this voucher int and decimal mean. So in this video, we'll be talking about data types. So when you create your tables, you need to give your columns data types. This helps for your columns to know what kind of data to expect in those columns and how to work with that data when you do some computation around that data. So today we'll be going through one of the most common data types that you will encounter in SQL Server. So those data types include numerical data types, date and time data types, string data types. So these are the types of categories actually that you have in SQL data type. So when it comes to numeric data type, you can have things such as uh, floats or integers. When it comes to integers, it's whole numbers and float is numbers that have floating points such as decimal numbers. And then date and time data types, it's where you can actually store your dates or you can actually store the, the time or the current timestamp. And then string data types, it's more of your characters, uh, your vouchers. So this include things such as voucher. So I think it's short for variable character or char, which is short for character. Integer data types, can be broken down into different types of integers. You can have big integers, which stores uh, bigger whole numbers. Never mind the, the commas here or the separate the delimiters here. This is just to show you the octants of this number. So this is actually a whole number without the separators here. And you can have int, which stores uh, uh, a, a, a less smaller number than a big int, and you have small int. And you have tiny int, which is from 0 to 255, which is more ideal for storing things such as age, uh, age for people. So let's just go through one of the examples that I've already created for you guys. In a previous video, I've showed you guys how to create a table. And if you're not familiar with how, on how to create a table, I suggest that you go and watch the previous video that we created. And if you look at the statement, you will just see that it's the... Uh, the very same statement that we wrote in our previous video is just this. It's a different table that I created for this uh, papers, for this video, for showing you guys the importance of working with data types. So one thing that you need to know about data types is, like I said, data types, they help organize your data in a sense of where it gives your column an idea of what kind of data to expect in that column and how to work with that data when you do computation around that data. So I'm going to create this table now. This is our data types example table. And that table is created successfully. Let me just drop this down a little. And I'm going to insert all this data. And if you're not familiar with the statement here, we did discuss this in a previous video. I suggest that you go back to that video and then just watch that video first before I come in here because this might be a, a, a bit tricky for you. So I always like to close my statement in the end. So with SQL, it doesn't really matter if we close a statement or not, but just to keep it clean, I always like to close my statement. So I'm just going to insert all of these values and execute that. So now you can see that six rows are affected. So if I go and just select everything from that table. So you can see that these are the data that we have in our table. And one thing that I didn't tell you guys in the previous video is, if you look at here, this identity, it's new. So what this does is it automatically assigns uh, a value of numeric that's starting from one and it will increment on each and every row 
by one. So this is the seed and this is the increment. This one is the increment. So what it did is remember when I showed you guys in the, in the previous video of how you should specify the columns that you want to provide the values for. So first name here, it's our first name. And then the last name here, it's our last name here. And the birth date here, it's the birth date here, same as the age. But I didn't specify the ID. But then the system knows that since I have an identity here, the ID should be something that it's auto increment. So if you're familiar with MySQL, it's the same as auto increment. So it knows that it should have a value that it's incremented by one from the previous column that it has. So since we didn't have anything here, started from one and in inserted one, two, three up until six like that. So one thing I want to show you guys about data types. So if you look at our table here, we have our, our ID, our first name, our last name and our birth date and age. So voucher and integer, they're the ones that you're more likely to learn or to first know when you're dealing with uh, data types, especially in in SQL or MySQL. Or if you're dealing with object-oriented programming, you might know a uh, string. This is the same as, uh, as a voucher. So one thing about a voucher or a string, it can hold, if not all, but almost all kind, all sorts of data. So your voucher can hold things such as uh, characters, it can hold things such as dates, it can hold integers, it can hold whatever that you throw into it. But the question here comes in is if voucher can hold all of this, all of this data, why do we need different types of these data types? So the answer to that is, like I said, these data types help give your columns a sense of what type of data to expect and how to work with that data. So if you look at our table, this is the output from our table. Let me just do that. So if you look here, we have a, a voucher that holds names. We have a voucher that holds last names and we have vouchers that hold uh, birth date. And so we have uh, a date that holds birth date and in tiny int that holds uh, ages here. So one thing about this is since you declared this as a voucher, it now it knows that it should expect and work or treat this data in a voucher way. And since you declare this as a date, it knows that it should expect a type of a date or should treat this uh, data in a, in a date way. So this helps in a sense of, let's say if I had a table like this, right? The very same table that I have, so I'm just going to drop this table and give you guys an example of why should we use data types and why should we use correct data types when you hold uh, our dates. So for now, I'm just going to do this, drop this table. And instead of uh, having our, our bit date here as date, I'm just going to cancel that and have it as a voucher that holds 100 and give it a, let me give it a, silly date let me just put double one day and let me just put zero five I'll, i'm only gonna edit those two and then let's do this so what i'm gonna do now is it's going to create the table since i highlighted the create table insert and select all these values so it's going to uh execute all of the statements starting from the table inserting and selecting at the same time so let me just do that so now if you look at what we have now, we have our birth date. And if you look at the the birth date for John and Jack, no, for, for John and Amanda. So the year here doesn't make sense. There's no year such as 11 or no year such as 05. So one advantage of using the correct data types is you can see that now I use this as a voucher and it accepted that value since a voucher is a string, any regular string, it does not matter what it is that you insert, your system will always accept it. But if I had this as a date type, let me just go drop this again, and let's create that table again. And if I had this as a date type, and I inserted something funny, 
that the system cannot understand as a date they should give me an error so i'm going to create that table and try to insert this whole data so now it tells me that conversion field when converting date or time from character string so what it's trying to tell you now is it does not understand this sort of a date uh this sort of a date that you gave it so technically this date does not exist so if i were to do to do something like this and say insert no no do that from here okay cool and say insert you can see that the first row was inserted because everything here checks out the date here is correct and the integer here is correct but the moment i try to insert this row the moment i try to insert this row i can do this for simplicity you can do that and say values the moment i try to insert that row it gives me the same error uh, previously that it gave us so it cannot understand the sort of date that you gave it here since this is not a valid date same as if you give it a, a format that does not understand so we live in different countries and different countries have different date formats and people are used to different date formats so most commonly or once used by sql server it's day it's year month and and day so if you were to switch this around so 2003 it's a valid date i can try and insert this and you can see it went through but if i were to switch this around and say put 15 day and 2003 day so this is still a, a valid date to some countries or to some people and to sql server it does not understand what that is because the format that it takes it takes something that it's it's in this format so it's year month and day so this is the format for date so if i try to insert this you see it tells me that it failed to convert this because technically it doesn't know a year that it's 15 or a day of a month that it's 2003 so this is one of the advantages of choosing the correct data type or working with the correct data type it helps clean your data it helps having a table that will always have uh, accurate data so another example is the very same data that we have i'm just going to rerun this and insert everything so this is all our data our data that we have so if i were to select everything here and order our uh our output by age and when you say order by and you just specify your column and you don't specify whether you want to order it by ascending or whether you want to order it by descending by default it orders everything by ascending but i'll just keep uh ascending there so you know what's happening and if you look at this if i order by ascending or based on the age and since our age is a tiny int so it's a type of a numeric it's an integer it knows that 8 comes before 13 and 18 24 28 and 111 but if you had like i said with voucher you can hold almost everything but imagine if you had this as a voucher voucher can still take in integers but it is treated as vouchers because if you decline it if you declare is that voucher the system knows it at voucher and not as an integer so if i were to cancel uh, the tiny int and put a voucher here i'm just gonna put 10 uh, let's drop this and create our table again and rerun the very same statement that we did so now if i order this by age you can see that this order it's kind of messed up in a way you can actually like if you look at this it's weird and the reason for this is because you declared your age as a voucher and if you know with vouchers or with alphabet when you order something by alphabet you look at one alphabet at a time so if it was a b c d you look at uh strings that start with a and you look at strings that start with b and you look at strings that start with c in that order and if you had two strings that start with a 
you take those two strings first and you look at the, the second uh, character of those strings. And if the second character of those strings is the same, like maybe they have both have C, you take those two and you look at the third string of the of that character or the, the third character of that string. And if one had B and the other one had G, the one that has B, it's uh it's placed first because B comes before G. So this is the same way since you declare this as voucher, it treated this column as strings or as alphabets or as variables and what it did is it went through your data and and saw that okay i have 111 so first of all i have one so one comes before everything so it took the ones that started with one which is was one uh 13 and 18 and it went to the second character since all of this start with the same character and you went to the, uh, the second character and 101 you said one and compared one with three with eight and said one comes before three and eight so this is why this 111 it's the first one and it went to the second uh to the second values which is was eight uh, 13 and 18 and three comes before eight so that is why the 13 here is before the eight and the two two uh 28 24 and 28 the two here comes after one so that's why these two are below this three so but since these two have the same uh, starting character which is two it went and compared the second character which in this case it was four and eight so that's why the 24 came before the 28 here and then eight we know this is the smallest age uh, in, in this data but it came last because if you look at the first characters of everything here if you were uh, ordering this in alphabetical order it should come last because well it comes after all of these uh, numbers here all of the first characters here which is one and two so this is the reason why you should use correct data types let's put this back into a tiny uh into the correct into tiny int we don't need a number for that it knows the maximum and the minimum so let's just go and drop this that it's dropped what i'm gonna do now is i am going to show you guys uh, let me just rerun this again so i'm going to show you guys why you should have correct uh data types for your for your columns so if i were to so one thing that you haven't you haven't seen yet or you haven't discussed yet is SQL has what we call inbuilt function, such as uh, functions such as sum, uh, average, mean, max. We're gonna go through those in the next coming videos. But what this does is it's going to select the sum or it's going to calculate the sum of age for all the data that you have in, in your table, in this table which is the data types examples, and it's going to calculate the average of age for all the the data that is in this table so if i just do that then now you can see it gave me the sum of all this data or of all the column of age which is 202 and then it gave me the average of that which is 333 and if you had your data if your data was not a tiny int or something like a voucher how we we had it before I'm just gonna do this we drop the table create and do the statement all this row right there so now if you try to calculate the sum of age and the average of age but with a data type of a voucher so this should give an error and tell you that it can't convert this for the sum operator well you can still find a way around this by saying convert your data and then you convert your column of uh, age into we want this to be integer then let's just put that age in there and then you do the same thing for your average and then you say int and then you put the column that you want to convert in there and there's the same answer that we had before but 
if you see yourself going this route of converting uh, your variables into integers, you should see red flags in your in in your data. So by default, your integers or your data such as age, it should be the correct format. You shouldn't have to go through the route of converting and doing all that because what it's going to do is it's going to cost you a case where you're going to have something like, let's say you have, uh, instead of inserting a, a valid age, you insert something like 28-3, uh, which is not a valid age. But since you declared your age as a voucher, it will take this in with no problems. And there's your data, it went through. And even if you do this, you can see that you have that column there as an age, and that is not a valid age. And if you go through this route, and now you have this in your data and you try to convert, it's gonna throw that error. Cause now it does not know, it can't take this to an integer. So avoid the route of having to convert uh, your data types into the correct format. Just from get go, declare your data types into something that it's valid. So I'm just gonna take this back to the way it was i'm gonna take that back to uh, tiny int and this goes all the way for all sorts of uh, of data types so not only not only does this uh apply to tiny int but it applies to all types of data i can even show you guys with dates so if i were to do this and say let me select everything from my data types and let's order by date of birth mm. let's order by that i like to copy and paste i feel like that is the best invention by mankind so if i were to order by that and like i said by default if you don't uh, specify which order you want to use it's going to put accenting as a default state so you can see by this it ordered all your dates from the smallest age to to the highest well it started with 1992 up until 2015 this is because it knows that this is a type of a date and it knows how to order that and it knows what type of input to take in but if this was declared incorrectly maybe it was declared as a voucher and then you had a a different type of or maybe a, a wrong data inserted in there it will give you some data that it's that looks funny so one example that i'll give you is back in back in like I think three or four years back, I had a uh, a call from one of my friends. He had a table simi same or similar to this, and he had an issue where his output was, was something funny when he ordered by date. So like I said, our data types throughout the world, it's, it's different when it comes to things such as dates. So these make sense to some of the people that we know so depending on who you are you know different ways of ordering your data of different ways of displaying your date so what this does is it takes in uh this is gonna be a huge work so there in the middle it's your month in the middle it's always your month so now what this does is the year that you have is it's at the back and at the start it's your day and in the middle it's your month and if you have this declared as as a voucher in your in your in your table your table will still take this with no issues because since it's a plain string it does not know if you're trying to insert just a regular string or a date or an int so if you have something like this did i already drop this let's drop that okay that is already dropped so let's do that and insert all the data. And if I try to order this by birth date, so now you can see that it gives you some 
funny outputs. And it even took this in. And this is not even a valid date. It even took this in. This is not even a valid date because of that character there at the back. But if you look at this, the smallest uh, year here or the smallest, the, the smallest date of birth, it's not 2010. It should be 1995. But then it started with 2010 and went to 1992, 2015 to 2005, uh, 1999, 1995. That is, that is weird. And if you look at that, it's the same way as I explained to you guys when we did with the age column. Since you declare this as a voucher, your, uh, your system is treating this as a text or a variable type. So what it did is it went and looked at the first characters of your input. And from that, it found that the first characters here, we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 2. So it ordered all those ones that start with 0 first, because 0 comes before 1. And it went and checked the second character. And this one starts with 1, and the second one starts with 2. So since this one starts with 1, and this one starts with 2, it does not care about what's coming next or what's at the end. It puts the one that comes first and goes to the next one and went to 2. And compare the two with six and eight and two comes first and put the two there. So it does not care what comes after that since two comes first. And if this was in a correct declaration as a date, it will compare the whole thing, the whole thing as a date. So first what it will do, it, it will check the year, it will check the month, and it will check the date or the day. It is important for you guys to know which type of data to choose for your columns. And that's it for today's video and if you guys have watched this far don't forget to subscribe turn the notification bell on and hit that like button and i'll see you guys in the next video where we'll be discussing what constraints are so we'll be technically discussing what is uh what is primary key what is identity and what does it mean so i'll see you guys in the next video cheers